Hi, it's CJ from I Love My Kids blog, and today I'm going to show you step by step how to make a weighted blanket. Chances are, if you're watching this tutorial, you've been online and seen how crazy expensive they are. You can make one for a fraction of the cost. It will take a little bit of time and a sewing machine, but I bet you can do it. I'm going to walk you through every step of the way. Weighted blankets can help people who are suffering from anxiety. Uh, people who have trouble sleeping. It can help people who are frustrated or angry and need to have uh, weighted therapy. It can help people on the autism spectrum. Uh, there's so many uses. So um, obviously I'm not a doctor. I'm just a mom who's a blogger and knows how to sew. And I have made several of these blankets and they've made big differences for people that I've made them for. So um, make sure you check with your doctor first, make sure you're using the right weight ratio. You should make it at 10% of the weight ratio of the person. So I'm making this blanket for my nephew and he is 35 pounds. So I am making a three, I made him a 3.5 pound blanket. Anyway, I'm just going to walk you through each step of the way and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. A couple years ago, I wrote a tutorial on our blog about how to do this and since then we've had lots of people um, ask questions and make suggestions uh, we've had over 32,000 people pin it and um, a lot of people have seen success with it and I love a good tutorial but I love a tutorial video even more so I thought I would make a video for you visual learners today um, so I'm making this blanket for my four-year-old nephew uh, so the first thing I needed to do was determine what size we wanted to make it. So I grabbed a blanket that one of my kids used when they were about that age and measured it. And it ended up being about a yard and a half. Um, so I asked my sister to take my nephew over to the store and pick out his favorite fabric that he wanted. And so she got a yard and a half of one print and a yard and a half of another print. You could also just do three yards of one print if you just wanted it one style. I highly recommend that you stick to cotton, especially if this is the first time you're sewing it. Flannel also works good. Soft materials like fleece or knit or um, minky stretches a lot and it is totally possible to sew on them, but it's a little bit trickier. I've done my fair share of these lately and um, it's definitely easier if you do it on cotton. So I recommend that. Um, so we've got the material. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew right sides together first. And if you're new to sewing or aren't sure what that means, there's a right side to the fabric and a wrong. So this is the right side. It has the print on it and this is the wrong side. So we're going to take our right sides and our, our right sides and we're going to put them together. Then we're going to sew. There's four sides to this blanket. We're only going to sew three to start. So at the top, this is now going to be referred to as the top. I'm going to fold these over just like that and I'm going to sew down this first line completely. Then I'm going to sew down this bottom shorter end line. And then I'm going to sew down this line and when I get to the top of this one, because we don't want to close off the top, I'm going to fold these just like this and I'm going to just sew it to right there. And then this part will be open and what this does is it gives us a clean line that won't shred or make it so we can see um, anything else. Um, if you're awesome, you can iron this and pin it. Um, that's definitely what is recommended, but I'm kind of just a get it done kind of girl and I don't always do that. I just kind of eyeball it. After I'm done with that, I'm actually going to go around leaving this end open and I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to just double stitch it so we make sure that none of these um, weighted pellets are going to fall out. So I'm going to head to my machine right now and I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so I just got done sewing my three sides. I did the folding thing at the top so we'll have a nice clean edge. And I stitched the three sides. Um, and I did one round around the three sides and then I came back and I did another round of stitching on the three sides so everything will be secure. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut off these little threads and then I'm going to go th along the entire blanket and pull on the seams and make sure that they are securely stitched. I don't want anything falling out of the sides. This would also be a good time if you're following good sewing manners um, to iron these, press these seams. Um, but I may or may not be doing that step which is why I just make these for family and friends. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this inside out um, and although I'm sure that would be really fun to try to do while holding a video camera, I'm just going to put it down and flip it inside out and catch it on the other Okay, so I have the blanket flipped inside out 
as you can see it makes it kind of like a sleeping bag um, I measured my full length and my full width so I could determine how many pellets I need to put per um, pocket that I'm going to make I wrote out a plan and I put on this notebook paper the glare is pretty bad so I'm just gonna post some pictures um, in this video so you can see how I calculated it So I have my uh, blanket ready to be marked now. Uh, so my pockets are going to be seven inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and every seven inches I'm going to make a little mark. You cannot really see, but it is right there. Um, it's best if you can use a disappearing ink fabric pen, um, but my two-year-old has lost the lid to mine. So I just used a pencil and it erases surprisingly well. And then I'm just going to go a little ways down and I'm going to make another mark and then I'm going to go a little ways down and make a little another little mark and then I'm going to connect those marks while I'm sewing and just go all the way down to the end then I'm going to repeat the next seven inches over 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 until I have um, six straight lines of pockets I just finished sewing the lines down as you can see it goes all the way down and I did that along each one. Now, if I were just doing this for and not making tutorial, I probably wouldn't have chosen a white thread um, because it's very obvious, but for the tutorial purposes, I thought a white thread would be helpful. It looks really cute on the back side though, because you can't even see it, it blends in with that one. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my other pockets. So I'm gonna start here at the bottom where it's stitched together and I'm gonna my according to my plan I'm doing 7.4 so I find 7.4 and then I'm gonna make my mark and then I'm gonna go up to the first line and find 7.4 and make my mark then I'm gonna go to the next line and do the same thing and the next line and the next line until I'm done all the way done and I'm going to do that all the way across so here's my line right there I'm gonna go 7.4 mark the next line and go all the way down this way so I can mark off my 42 pockets now that all of my pockets are marked, I am ready to start stuffing the blanket. So what I'm going to stuff in it, I'm going to add um, some batting to make it um, softer and a tiny bit warmer. Um, and I have divided my pockets, I have 42 pockets in this specific blanket according to my plan. And because I want the weight of the blanket to be on my nephew rather than just on his bed, on these seven side pockets here and these seven side pockets, I'm just going to put batting. So I'm going to put more batting and then I'm going to save the weight for the middle part of the blanket that will actually be on his body. So um, what we're going to, we're going to do batting. So I put a little bit more, that's going to go down that pocket and this one's going to go down this and then I'm going to add my poly pellets. Now poly pellets, this is what they, they can look like this. They can be clear, they can be black, they can be brown. It's just really important that you get ones that can hold up to high heat and to water um, in case you're gonna be wanting to wash this blanket, um, which when you have a four-year-old, you're definitely gonna need to wash the blanket. So um, they're odorless, they're small, um, they're hard, and that's kind of what poly pellets are. The best deal I've found is I found them on eBay um, for the best prices. So if you check the blog post that's attached in the comments, I'll give you some directions on where I've gotten mine in the past. I've had several different kinds. They all seem to work about the same. Um, so in each of my 
pockets I need two ounces so I can make up a 3.5 pound blanket for my nephew so I have pre-measured this out and I used a, a post scale or a kitchen scale um, to do that so what I'm gonna do is I of course mentioned that I'm just gonna put that one in but on the second set of pockets here I'll just put it inside and then I'd push it all the way down to the bottom and that is why I suggest you use uh, make your pockets at least seven inches so I'd push that all the way down to the bottom and then I'd pour in my poly pellets I have each of my pockets stuffed and then I took pins and I pinned along right above well I guess technically below where I want to stitch them this line closed um, that way none of the pellets fall into my machine and get run over by my needle um, of my machine because when that happens your needle breaks and that's sad um, so just make sure you're careful and um, using your fingers before you sew it feed it through um, to make sure that you're not going to run into any of the pellets so I'm just going to load this onto my machine just like this and I'm going to slow down this line and then I'm going to do it all over again. Stuff with batting, stuff with batting, fill with beads, stuff with batting, sew the line. Okay, so my first six pockets have been sewn just by sewing that line. What I like to do next is take the blanket and hold it upside down and shake it to make sure there's no spaces or anything here so the pellets will fall out. So I just like to do that and if anything falls out then I know that um, I need to fix that before I move on to the next one. Once I'm done with the row then I go start the next one. I stuff it accordingly to my plan and then sew the line across then go to the next row and the next row and the next row until I reach the top. When I get to the top I'll check back in to give you some more tips. stitched all of my rows and completed the blanket and now I'm here at the very top. Um, filling the blanket took me probably about an hour to fill stuff so then do the next row, the next row, the next row and I stopped at least three times to help get my two-year-old applesauce or and to tuck my kids in for bed so it maybe would have taken me a little less time if I did this during nap time or something or when the kids were at school. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to close up the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something crazy and actually use the iron. My home ec teacher would be so proud. And I'm going to iron these edges so they are really straight and perfect. And then I'm going to pin them because I don't want to see this side of the blanket when I'm on this side of the blanket. So um, it's going to look something like that. You won't be able to tell um, the other side from the other side. So that's what I want to do. I'm going to iron it all. I'm going to pin it all. And then I'm going to sew it closed. I'm going to do a small seam allowance. Uh, so pretty much that means I'm going to sew it really close to the edge and I'm going to do it really slow so I can have a nice straight line because if you sew it like at a half an inch then this part will kind of like flip open and so I'm going to sew it really close to the edge once and then I'm going to go back and do it again at maybe like a quarter of an inch just so I can make sure that my sister won't be cleaning up pellets off the floor so we don't want to do that because I love her so I'm gonna stitch that up and then I'll come back with some final thoughts
Now, after you've stitched up the top, you are all done. It wasn't that hard, was it? It's a little intimidating at first, but anyone can do this. It's soft, it's comfy, it's weighted. It can provide so many benefits. I can't wait for my nephew to get it. If you have any questions, please leave a blog post comment on the blog post that's posted in the comments below, and I'll get back to you and see if I can help you along. If you make one, post it to our Facebook page so we can see it. Thanks for watching.